Sciences. My name is Jason Newland. Please only listen to this when you can. Safely close your eyes. Just to let you know that I have removed all the adverts from all of my podcasts. so that you can have a more comfortable experience. Now, I'd like you to get yourself comfortable. And I know that I mention laying down on your bed, head touching the pillow, your body relaxing and your mind slowing down. I do realise that not everybody has the luxury of being able to lie down on a bed, maybe due to physical issues. Some people might have to lie, you know, sit up in bed or may sleep in a chair. So it's about just the same thing in your mind as anybody else. So if you're sleeping in a chair, it could be a case of your head touches the back of the chair, your body relaxes and your mind slows down. Or if you're sitting up in a in the bed, I imagine you'd have a pillow behind your your head supporting your neck. So you can have that be a trigger to relaxation or maybe if you spend a lot of time in that position do something a little bit different in order to prepare yourself. So it could be something as simple as just moving your legs around or putting your hands on top of your legs, just letting them drop on your legs. It could be a variety of different things. It could be just pressing the play button on this recording. listening to me, listening to my voice, and that being the signal to your brain to send those chemicals through your body, to release those chemicals that relax your body and calm down your mind. to let you know I do have longer recordings I do a weekly sleep hypnosis podcast some of those they're all longer 30 minutes plus some of them are nearly an hour and I also do the let me bore you to sleep which is not hypnosis it's just me just talking about nothing for an hour and I do them very regularly so you know what I was thinking about I was thinking about sometimes doing the opposite or thinking the opposite in order to get different result. For example, if you're laying in bed and all you're thinking to yourself is, I want to go to sleep. I've got to go to sleep. I need, I need to go to sleep now. Then, kind of the opposite of that pressure. 
pressure that you're putting up, you know, onto yourself. Unnecessarily. But even though it's unnecessarily, it's very natural to do that. And I defy anybody say that they haven't done that because I know I have I've no doubt you have and I imagine everybody at some point has tried to force themselves to go to sleep and then just lie there wide awake it's kind of the more you force it the more it's not going to happen Whether it's the rebellious side of ourselves, because not everybody likes to be told what to do. I don't, generally, unless someone gives me a check for a million pounds and says, you must cash this this afternoon. I'll say okay, I'll have that. But generally, there seems to be a a response comes up when that pressure is put upon yourself to do something that you know that you need to do because sleeping is so important and so necessary for your well-being. At the same time, it can't be forced, I guess without medication, you know, the only time I've ever completely um, sort of forced sleep it wasn't my doing it was when I was on the operating theatre in hospital being asked to count from a hundred backwards and then I think I got to about three like three numbers and then I was gone but that isn't sleep that's that's completely being unconscious another time I took some tablets prescribed tablet and within about 10 minutes of taking it I was gone before you know well till my alarm went off 9 hours later outside of that I've never been able to force it always has to be natural because at the word natural, it's nature. Nature is taking place when you sleep. The healing processes of your body and your mind are in action when you sleep. However, they're also in action when you're awake. But they're more so in action when you're awake you're relaxed than when you're just awake because if you have a cut on your finger your body you know your thumb doesn't wait until you're asleep before it starts to heal it starts to heal straight away the blood sent to that part of the body to cleanse it to cover it over with a scab and then it heals so it's, you know, all this, uh, the idea that healing only takes place when we're asleep is, of course, not right. But on the same side, if you have a cut on your finger and you carry on doing stuff, there's a chance that you might injure it 
further but when you're asleep that won't happen so the healing has more time to do what it needs to do and when I talk about healing I also think about the your body recuperating your mind resting although there's times when your mind is very active when you're asleep so being asleep isn't being unconscious it's just not being consciously aware we dream and we process so I was thinking instead of laying there trying to sleep trying to go to sleep trying to drift off you know trying to force it trying to make it occur what would happen if you tried to stay awake and I made a video years and years ago 2011 I think and it was my most popular video that I ever did it's called Try and Stay Awake. Good, good name, but um, it was a challenge. So this, although it's not a challenge, it's just an idea of something that maybe you could do now to try and stay awake. Make sure that you're laying down on your bed, relaxed. Because obviously if you're playing a drum set, then staying awake could be quite easy, I imagine. So it's a case of trying to stay awake, but at the same time, being in that sleep position. Trying to stay awake, but at the same time, exactly the right place to naturally drift off to sleep and just notice as you try and stay awake and how things change start to kind of not want to because you're lying down on your bed for a reason as well as actually it's really comfortable to lie there staying awake doesn't really seem very appealing at all and you notice that your body gets heavier and your mind seems to just wander almost like you're on a slide a big like water slide or something like that or any kind of 
slide you're halfway down the slide but you keep trying to stop yourself from sliding any further down and you're holding yourself with your hands but the weight of your body is pushing downwards and gravity is pulling your body down yet you're trying to fight it by gripping onto the sides with your hands and every now and then you kind of you let go of your hands and you slide down a bit and then you grab grab it and try and pull yourself back up the slide and then your hands get tired and you slide down a bit more and then you manage to grab the sides again pull yourself back up and it gets harder each time to pull yourself all the way up to the top and each time you get closer to the top your hands get tired again and you slide down a little bit further and you stop and with your hands and you pull yourself up but you can't get back up as far as you did before because the further you drift the harder it is to do anything else and that gripping is trying to stay awake trying to prevent what naturally happens and what's inevitable but you just keep trying to grab the sides of that slide and you know trying to pull the, your body weight up and then your hands get tired again and you drift down and you stop again and you hold on to the sides and you it just gets so tiring so tiring trying to hold on to the sides of that slide and pulling your body up trying to defy gravity and nature the nature of drifting and sleeping and you drift again to stop but you're further down and you start to pull your body up but it's as if you suddenly weigh you weigh more your body is so much 